tis the season to be jolly and, of course, to go to the mall and buy some toys for the kids. Now, are the toys that you buy today comparable to those wonderful action figures we all got to know and love in the 1960s? John Marshall probably doesn't think so, since he wrote a book about action figures. Actually, you've written books about toy trends in, in various decades. Mm -hmm. Right. I have three books, one for each decade, 60s, 70s, 80s. You're going to go backwards to the 50s or forward to the 90s for well, the next one? Forward, well, actually, for the next two, we're doing uh, superhero toys and monster toys. And uh, those will cover 60s up till today, because I kind of do the whole baby boom kind of thing. Uh, actually, I guess doing 90s toys uh, wouldn't be so much fun yet, because they're still in the stores. Yeah, I mean, they're I don't have any... They're not collectibles yet, I, I would well, think. Or are they? Well, you know, people try to pretend that they are. Um, Beanie what Babies were, are a good example. What was the one before the Beanie Babies? Uh, the Power Beanie Rangers? Babies. No, no, they were dolls. They were soft, squishy kind of dolls, and every kid had to have one. Um, Cabbage Patch. So you got it, right. Now, are they today collector's items, or is that over? Well, it's funny, because when I was in college, uh, I had a friend who, was, her brother was the vice president of Coleco, and she said, you know, I got one of those dolls for Christmas, and it's hideous. I don't know why people would even want one. <laughs> and um, it's all manufactured. The television tells people what to buy. They, the television tells people that they want something. It tells the kids to tell their parents to get it. And then they just, they run out and try and find it. Yeah, but John, it, it told them not about the Edsel. Well, and things... It, I mean, it doesn't always work is what I'm getting at. Well, actually. things are a lot different now. There's a lot more saturation. A lot of the advertising is aimed straight at the kids. And it says, kids, go tell your parents. Now, when, but back in the 1960s, that wasn't true. Oh, who is this? That is the Green Hornet. And Cato. Where's Cato? Ah, uh, well, <laughs> Cato is... <laughs> uh, don't look there. Yeah. Cato is not out, uh, not available. Now, here's something very interesting that ties into the present day. This is a recreation of a Captain Action Green Hornet doll. This is a new toy. Oh, really? It is a recreation of a 1960s toy. Because Can the, I assume there's going to be a Green Hornet movie soon? Uh, supposedly. I've heard about yeah. that, but we'll see. Anyway, this is indicative of how the trend is aiming more and more toward adult collectors. Because people grew up, everybody who runs the toy companies is in their 30s and 40s, yeah. and they're bringing back all the old toys again. Yeah, but actually, the Green Hornet goes back even further than that. Yes, the Green he Hornet certainly was does. on the comic strips and on the radio in the 1930s. Yes, yeah. 40s, 30s, 40s, yes. And this is Dr. Evil. He is the arch enemy of Captain Action. He too was Hi a there, popular. Folks. Hi, folks. He too was a popular 1960s toy that is brought back today. So these are new. The the Dr. Evil that you're holding, you can go to Walmart or Kmart or KB and buy it today. Now, do you think the parents are telling, "Hey, kids, I had one of these"? Is that is that the idea of marketing is, these again? That is exactly what it is, yes. Yeah, and uh, you keep your beanie babies, but you should have a Dr. Evil as well? Exactly right. Now tell me about these Furbies. Do you, do, have you ever seen one? Yes, I've seen them. What uh, do they look like? Well, they're funny looking and hairy, and they babble on a lot, so I identify with them up to a certain point. <laughs> up to a point, right? And um, I don't see what the big fuss is. They have a $30 retail, but you can't find them in stores. So you have to go to flea markets, and they have these these parasites, these vampires, who run into the stores at 5 o'clock in the morning and or 8 o'clock in the morning and buy 40 or 50. They take them for resale to the, to the local flea market. Now, I have seen signs even to this day about the Beanie Babies in various no. stores, only two to a customer, and uh -huh. not for resale, all that kind of stuff. Right. So the Beanie Babies, that continues. Yeah, well, Beanie Babies is a phenomenon. I mean, people are crazy for them. I don't know why, but that's how it well, is. Well, they're, they're cute little toys. They're, actually, they're little bean bags is what they are. <laughs> yes. You know, they're okay. But, yeah, uh, $5,000 bean bags, yeah, right. Yeah, but how much? But new, they're what? Five, six, ten dollars $10? They're 5 or $6. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But there are some that you're getting, how much did you say? Like five grand for some of the more hard to find ones. Now, what, what makes one worth five grand when you can buy one in the store for five bucks? Rarity. It's always rarity with collectibles. People want something that not everybody else has. But they made millions of them. Yeah, and that's strange. <laughs> I mean, how'd that happen? Uh, it's all perceived value. And that's the difference between something like G.I. Joe. Okay, let me, a I'll genuine hold it up. 60s GI Joe. This is a genuine 60s. That is not a reissue. That is, is a mint a condition, oh, beautiful yeah. $200 GI Joe. 200 bucks. Oh sure, because there's so few of them left today. They're in decent condition. How much did all Joe sell for new? Uh, four bucks, four or five four bucks. bucks. 
Well, and doesn't see, he come with a whole bunch of equipment you could buy as well? Like, separately, kind of yes. Like Barbie dolls, yes, a helmet, and a rifle, exactly, and a belt, and the whole Exactly, business. yes. And basically, what I always see, it's a counterpoint between something with genuine value, which is rare and hard to find, and something with artificial value, like a Beanie Baby, which people are told is worth money, but it isn't. All right. Whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, you just... <laughs> <laughs> I can say I'm a professional. Everybody who was an economics major in school knows that ain't true. Well, things are worth what you can get for them. That's true. As long as there's one sucker, then yeah, that's exactly, all it counts. Exactly. Yes. Now, who, who we got here? This is Mike Hazard from the 1960s. He is made by the Marx Company. He was a secret agent. And he doesn't have his Put trench coat or his accessories, but he's so rare, I thought it might be nice to bring him along and show him off. Now, how much is Mike worth? Uh, Mike... Uh, you said the magic word, rare. Yes. Mike, as is, the one you're holding is worth about $40. With all of his little pieces, he can be two, $300. We're going to take a little break, and when we come back, we'll be back to talk some more uh, about action figures of the 1960s. John Marshall's book is a book basically for collectors. Yes. Uh, it gives you the, the prices and where you can, and, and what they are, and how much they should be worth, and how many of them there are. Yeah, well, sort of. I mean, availability, <laughs> not, yeah, not relative. the actual count. Okay. Right. A little break. We'll be back with John right after this.